Hello, world. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Dorsey here today on the Bonsai Balcony. We are looking at a beautiful sunny Saturday. Very cool. The kids are at the pool enjoying the day. These kids are in the house enjoying the day. Also, uh, the zen of these trees is very, 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 very rewarding. Um, I could just go from one side to the other and everybody is looking so well behaved at the moment. This is a quick look at all the little buds. I'm gonna to get to what this show's about in a minute. This is a quick look at all the little buds that are just starting to come out in certain, well, some of them have been going for quite a while uh, on our, uh, on our literati, on our nice little literati. Uh, I wonder what happened. Like I lost a few needles there. Uh, but everybody's looking for the most part. Everybody's looking really, really nice. Got a, got a nice water today. Everybody pulled up into this morning just uh, on that borderline, borderline dry. So we gave it a few hours and let everybody get to that, well, like, kind of like the sweet spot. And then came through and watered everything. It was really good. And... Uh, I am just really don't have a whole lot to fret about at the moment. Everything is just looking as good as it, uh, everything is just looking right now as good as it can. I mean, look at all the, you know, the lush growth on here and it's just, it's just good to see. And it's kind of why we do this. And even though like the stuff that I'm focusing in on right now, it's not necessarily finished work. It's pre-bonsai. These are my bald cypress trees, and they've kind of been with us since pretty, pretty early on. I um, I thought that I going in, there were some things that I thought would be cool. Going in, I thought it would be cool to have something that would be a starter. And then I realized that just kind of looking Asian was not the same as looking bonsai and that some things that you're gonna have that are starters are going to, uh, are gonna look nice as starters and can be seen. And some things, uh, if you had a backyard, you would be putting them in a spot where they wouldn't be, uh, where they wouldn't be out in public, you would be getting developed along. And I kinda had to weigh how I do bonsai uh, against how other people might do bonsai because what we're doing here on our balcony everything is our growing space and our show space and our zen space all combined into one so is as if as a tree under development it looks like an unholy mess uh then that's not going to be as much fun in the long run something that would something that would that would um inspire a little bit more a little bit more joy or anticipation or something would always you know would always go and i think so far i've been kind of able to strike that balance these bald cypress are years not many but years a few years a couple say a couple uh away from being fully developed trees and then they will have to uh, get their roots cut back and uh Going in, you know, uh, I kind of started with bonsai about the same about the same time that COVID came in. I had decided to use the part where we were all being grounded to uh, decorate my apartment, which I was planning on doing uh, a little bit more. It was my apartment decorating was going style was going to be eclectic and I was going to be an eclectic collector. That's, you know, it was gonna take a minute. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, we're gonna be uh, stuck here for a minute. So uh, that also coincided with some construction that was going on with this apartment. So I didn't have, I mean, with this balcony, so I didn't have access to this balcony, but I was stuck here. So that meant that I um, decorated my apartment mostly um, over uh, Craigslist ads and uh, things that I found on Craigslist, you wouldn't believe how much of my apartment actually came from, from uh, finds on Craigslist. 
and um, uh, you know mail order stuff, uh, you know little treasure shops and and the like. So with that going on, as soon as the uh, balcony became available, I had ideas already in place because I had already started decorating uh, decorating the apartment itself. And what I thought I would do was make this place a little. I would put this yellow day bed there there. And this would be my star. This would be a place where I could sit down and look at the stars. I get a beautiful view of the night sky, mostly a lot of air traffic, but I like that too. And as many stars as I can as I can uh, stand to look at in this in this southern view. And at some point, as a matter of just making it look well, a bonsai figured into that. It started off as just doing wisterias and planters, kind of like you see that wisteria in that planter there but uh the leftover one i was wondering what to do with the leftover one which is up there that was my first bonsai and it, it wasn't uh and just trying to figure out how to care for it that i became exposed to more uh wisteria bonsais and then from there i took off i saw where one had won uh, a big deal show in japan a number of years ago with i believe an englishman an old Englishman who had who had gotten um, who had gotten the invitation and taken his tree to Japan for the I don't know if it was the Kokofu or not, but it was a it was a very you know so that kind of got me off and rolling. Next thing you know, I'm just staying up all night um, watching bonsai videos, which led to all of this. And early on, uh, watching all of the videos that I watched, I watched some from um, Heron's bonsai, Peter Hahn. And he said something that made me laugh, which was when an old guy says, you know, something from a, a rap song or something. He goes, I like big trees. I cannot lie. And I knew at once that Peter Hahn liked big trees and also uh, knew the words to, I like big butts and cannot lie. That was, that was, that was both uh, equally, equally entertaining, but on uh, different levels. So, but I was thinking about big trees too, and just while he was saying that, he was showing us some of his, some of his a grouping of very large trees that he said some people wouldn't consider bonsai. That depends on where you are, uh, actually, uh, Peter. Um, some places uh, they have bonsai trees, and they are bonsai trees because they're still in pots, but they have to. Uh, maintain them with ladders uh, that they have to use ladders to climb up on the top of the pot to, to bring up their ladders so that they can get up and then prune the trees but anyway i took to the bug i took to the bug of big trees early and started thinking about what i could have in the way of big trees and big pine trees were intimidating to me uppity uh, japanese black pines seem to be what you see a lot of in the world of bonsai and they also uh, seem to carry a lot of maintenance and they also seem to carry a lot of mystery. And um, you hear a, a lot of people who um, have had mixed luck with them and you just kind of find reasons not to go that route. But it didn't take long for me to get crazy over the black pines and then later the ponderosas. And from there, we'll just go off. And, and But I want in other tangents too. I have oaks and we have and we have our wisterias, as mentioned before. I have a, a Chinese wisteria. But these cypress trees, they always did kind of connect with me. One, they were uh, stated over and over again to be easy to grow. I have found that to be true. Uh, two, they're very hardy. In most places in America, uh, these guys can withstand the winter and um, and if you can water them, you know, if, as long as you're around to water them, they'll do fine. They'll even do fine without you. And if you're not around to water them, if you can put their pot in a tray that's got partially submerged with water, then you can blow town and it'll, it will literally go without you. They are that easy to grow. So uh, there are things to love about bald cypress. But here's some of the things that the decisions that I've made in growing these guys. Here's some of the things that I'm doing that have been right. And here's some of the things that we've done wrong. And here's some of the things that I've learned along the way. 
And what I've learned along the way is, is it's a very forgiving process. One, bald cypress trees, the American bald cypress, they grow amazingly fast. I knew that from growing up in the South. I have grown up in places where these were in our yard and they were beautiful and impressive. Um, and they grew really, really, really fast. Here where I am in California, I see that just, I drove through so many farms and fields to get here on my way to this, to this Mecca, what I feel like is Mecca for me. It just no real reason, I just feel at home here. But um, one thing that doesn't happen is these guys don't go quite, don't grow quite as fast because it doesn't get as hot here as the places that I came from to get here. So, uh, but they still seem to do very, very well in the uh, Bay Area, in the San Francisco area of California. Um, and I've had these guys going for probably going on four years. And everything that I have done in the first couple of years was not necessarily productive. Uh, I spent the first year probably fed them sporadically, at best, sporadically. Uh, also, every spring I would, I would see them flush out. And then once they had flushed out, I would prune uh, all the uh, branches back to the ones that I thought looked best and make it look like some sort of uh, presentation so that we could uh, all enjoy what they looked like and see uh, what my intentions were with these trees in the future. That uh, was not good. And I didn't, uh, I don't think I did enough of that to suck the health out of the trees. I got three super healthy trees to start off with, but, uh, that was basically a year lost learning not to do that. What you see now are three overgrown trees. Last year in the winter, when all the foliage came off, I decided which branches were going to stay and then cut them back so that they could vipercate out. So one would become two. Cut them back short and let them, and let them do that. The ones that we decided would go, we cut them back at the trunk, just chop them back to where they're, they're not there now. Some of what we cut back didn't, didn't survive the winter. So we always maybe pad that a little, let a couple of them compete and see who makes it through. You may have chosen the wrong, picked the wrong pony come spring when it comes time to butt out. Sometimes you see that the, something that you've decided to let stay um, didn't survive the winter just because it wasn't hardy enough to uh, become a limb. So maybe something over here got cut back so that it could stay, but it was not really any bigger than this when I did that, and, and as such, it didn't survive the winter. Meanwhile, this bare area is starting to produce all these little goosebumps. You see here what I call goosebumps. This, the, uh, the spectrum hitting those bumps, I believe, is what activates their growth. They see that they're not being shadowed and that causes them to take a shot at making a uh, new life there, there. And all of this energy is coming up partially because we just came through and chopped all these tops uh, just not too long ago. These are all three new tops, four, all four are new tops. And they're new tops because uh, Cutting them back will not slow the tree down. It will speed the tree up. I was watching the tree either go from really hot conditions and kind of starting to slow down and it's kind of midsummer slow down to what we go back and forth to. Uh, it goes 80, 65, 80, 65, 80, 65. And there's no real incentive to uh, just absolutely get with it in either one of those modes. Um, so the end result is, the end, re the end result is to speed things up, I clip the tops back and that, and then I take the next branch and I bend it up with the wire. This was all, a, these were all branches just a few short months ago. And now they're the new leaders and the energy coming up through here has also gotten all of these little bud sites, I believe 
it's more active in all of these bud sites because of that. And because of these bud sites are, are in places where uh, they're not they're not being shadowed by stuff overhead, uh, that direct sunlight on them tells them to uh, that they could be that they could be the next branch there that they would be worth a shot. So then come fall, uh, when all of this changes colors, we'll go through and clip it back again, and uh, we'll clip it back to what we want to keep which will get vibricated so this guy would get cut here and this guy would get cut longer there so it wouldn't be directly proportional. Probably would decide this guy makes the show now. Uh, maybe th this guy or maybe this guy or maybe, you know, something like that. But it needs to be, it needs to be staggered with what we have going on now. And it w would not be so overgrown, but it would be our choices, what stays and what goes. And then next spring we start, we start all over again. Early on, uh, I had I made decisions, and a couple of decisions. Let's see. We'll just go over this mistake first. This is pretty fine, Akadama, and everything I was watching was with the masters and their impressive trees, and I was hearing about Akadama. And I was also watching amateurs and I was watching them reach for potting soil and say that it's cheaper. So I thought, you know, the people who are making their living off of it go with Akadama. The people who are uh, going to uh, the department store for their soil or either saying that they got away with kitty litter or are going with potting soil. So, uh, yeah, no, we're going to go with Akadama. And that's really the only thing. I thought that these trees were really a major project. I thought that they were gonna be where they were sitting now for several years, and they are. And I decided to just start them off right. So I filled that that uh, training pot, that's not even a bonsai pot, but I filled that mica training pot up with some pretty fine Akadama. Now the benefit to fine Akadama is fine Akadama makes fine branches. I mean, fine roots. I got ahead of myself. Fine roots help to make fine branches. So, on a finished tree, uh, when you're bringing a tree into a finished state and it's repotting in its, in, its, in its forever pot, which is gonna be a little bit more restricted, we've gone past the point of wanting to grow more tree, but wanting to maintain the nice tree that we have, all that kind of stuff. Then we would be looking at making finer and finer branches that come forth from that, and that would be the time to go with something fine like that Akadama, like fine Akadama. What that should have been, it should have been chunky. It should have been more chunky like this. That, that's big and heavy chunks. Uh, what that would have done was grown bigger, heavier, heavier thicker roots. And what that would have helped us do was more quickly grow thicker, heavier branches. I slowed the trees down a little bit by planting them in the good stuff unnecessarily. So I wanted to do right by my trees and do, you know, blah, blah, but that was unnecessary and that could have been better spent in other directions probably would have gone faster their development on this on this see you know we're taking our our big trunk chops that we have here and trying to turn these bases into that and there's so much foliage that it's kind of hard to see that there is a little bit of a transition already happening there but we're getting there it's easier to see that this was one such transition a year or so ago and just as you can't see that slanted chop and this was a little branch two years ago now this is our leader just like as of this spring this was a, this past spring this was a branch so that's kind of that's kind of how you know we're making this work a couple of years ago when i got this tree with this buttress 
you know, as you can see, barely through there, it's coming up as a twin trunk. It was not necessarily a twin trunk. When I got the tree, the chop in the top was, was the same height as what you see now, but it was straight across. Just woof, right straight across. And where that was straight across, there were two leaders that had been cut proportionately about like what you see my fingers right now. They were about as big around as my finger. They were about as long as my big and my index finger. And they were on either side of that trunk. And what I did was go to the base of them and cut a V to make both of those, boom, boom, you know, more of uh, their own trunk. I didn't pick one as a leader and fold the other one down. I'll let them both go. The only thing was they were both, how can I show this back? By going in here. They were both outside the trunk a little further than I liked. These little guys, they were, they were like, they were like out here, disproportionately big. And at first I thought to myself, by the time those grow out, and the trunk goes out, grows out, they'll probably catch up. That's probably what'll happen, but I worried. And in that first year, after I made this V cut, dude, pow, and then planted them, when this back trunk that I was growing then, like the little finger, when it produced a sprout at its base kind of close at its base over here but kind of close to where my thumbnail is I went that would make a better leader and this is year year one so I cut that back branch off and that's that baby spike that came up and the reason I went with it is it didn't come off because instead of coming like way off on the front of the trunk and way off in back of the trunk, they almost, <coughs> they almost look like towers off of a, off of a buttress of a castle or something, you know? Um, I had one of them directly over, directly over the base. And the only one that was uh, not that way was the front one which was now bigger. But this one, this back one, was catching up quickly. They grow really fast. We had really good growth that year. That was also the year I started feeding them, and then our growth just picked right up. A year went by. We finally learned to stop pruning this thing back uh, like a, a poodle in the summer, but let it pull out, flush out stuff. That was also about the same time that we learned that we had thrown a lot of good money away on Akadama, that the tree would have, would have probably grown faster and matured faster and reached our goals faster had it been in, a, in, in some larger, chunkier uh, boon mix, perhaps. Uh, would have been a good way to go also. But at any rate, this is what it is. The trees are fine with it. They're just taking their time, and we're fine with it because we like growing them. So it's all good, and we're still making our ramification on our branches as we go. But every once in a while, we go back and we do a little chop and we take our next branch closest to that and we stick it straight up and wire it that way or stick it straight up and then wire it that way. And then that's our new leader. And in, before, before this even gets really up in there, all of this will have already healed over. You could barely see where that happened there. You could, this was larger when it happened there, but that's almost gone already. And that's kind of what happens. Lo and behold, last year, the leader that was here produced a little spike at its base. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing, but it was, it was all the way back here in the base. And at that time, if you can find my finger, this leader that was here, that's no longer here, it was out here where my finger is now. See that? It was hanging that far out. Like, that's what I was saying, like on the corner 
tower of a castle, how they have these little off towers and stuff. It was hanging way out like that. And I was really wondering, like I had been wondering for the last couple of years, whether or not all of this was going to fatten up and all of that was going to fatten up to combine. But I decided right then that even though the leader in front was three years old, that we were going to, uh, that if the little shoot that has grown up behind it, that was so choice in its, in its location, it was directly over the second of the two towers of this base, that if come spring, if it was still there, that I would start chopping the top of the original leader and make sure that that tiny leader didn't get broken and stayed pointed up. And when they got even, I cut the big one back all the way. And this has been our new leader ever since. Its position over the base of the, over its half of this base of the tree is perfect. Just like the one before it did two years, three years before. That was, that was last year. I'm gonna move in, move all this stuff out of our way. And we'll go in there and try to get a little better look in there. You can see that I've got a lot of cut paste in there covering up where I just went through with my hybrid cutters and carved back that whole base that came out of that. And at the same time, you see this array of branches way more than what we would normally let fly coming out of the base of that. That's all just increasing that energy and helping all of this. There's the, there's the little bit of bright red callus rollover that I hope you can see um, where it has pushed the cut paste out of the way and flicked it off. That's also happening here. You can see a little dark spot here. Uh, it looks like the bark is separating, but if you were to look down here, you can see that if this bark is separating, the layer of bark underneath it is present. So that wouldn't be um, phloem or whatever. That wouldn't be the that wouldn't be the lex layer of dead wood. We can lose that at some point. I don't peel anything off the tree because sometimes that leads to scars. I'm like, you know, I'm like your grandmother when I'm going, don't pick at it. Uh, but in this case, this is an example of how the rollover is causing that little gap. And you can see the rollover here and here. This is where, uh, this is where that spot lived and uh, it's gone now. And all of these little branches here will get cut back eventually to this one that you see here, not any of these others. This was our original branch. All of these others are here to just increase all the energy to this neighborhood and get this rollover going like it is. And this is a year old. Uh, you can see when I get the camera this high, you can see the difference that the two extra years makes in those two. But I really like the fact that the skinnier one is the one in front, so it doesn't eclipse the fatter one behind. Um, that wasn't a reason on its own to do it, but it quickly occurred to me when I was getting ready to make this chop that that was going to be that was going to be a benefit to that. That I was going to uh, look forward to seeing, you know, just look forward to seeing as on the by and by as it worked out. So that's kind of a quick look or a look back at um you know that was some pretty major pretty major work and that was a pretty you know i made a decision year one to do something like this with one of two of the original leaders but i used those two leaders as my pattern to make this v chop and then as luck would have it that same year i chopped back one of those leaders in in lieu of a baby coming out at its base. And then two years later, uh, the second one at a shoot coming out of its base. So 
you get time, even if they were growing faster, if I were doing this in Mississippi, um, you get time to make changes as you go. Last summer or, uh, yeah, last summer, you guys saw me take the chainsaw and the carving tools and the sanders and redress all of these uh, top chops to make sure that their rollover stayed active and didn't just start, you know, getting all, um, you know, getting all super relaxed and slow down. And as you can see, that's working out. That's working out nicely. At some point, I may consider still doing, taking the chainsaw and going here and just doing a little this way and then go down because we'd like all of that to just roll over and as it rolls over, that'll just go ahead and just, just zip that up like a clamp. And I probably wouldn't be able to necessarily do that on that because that would be a hard move to make inside that. But uh, yeah. So you can see the rollover on this guy and how it is now throwing all of its cut paste off to the side. This was where uh, it had stopped rolling. You know, this is where it, the rollover had stopped last time. We cut, we uh, sanded it back to that edge and all of this webby looking stuff that you can see the pattern in that, that's what it's done since then. So that's a lot faster. Um, I'll let this go a little longer when the tree's bare again, maybe before it starts budding out, just before it starts budding out, maybe we'll go back and do another cleanup if we think might be a good to wait a year to do that again. But anyway, this would be a good spot to um, conclude what's been going on with our bald cypress. The dews are uh, grow bald cypress, especially if you're uh, a beginner. They're quite easy to grow. They're quite easy to ramify. If you just sit back and let them, they will make they will make a whole lot of branches and you will get a whole lot of choices. Uh, try not to make any hard, fast decisions your first year with them because if you have them, you should have them for a long time. And sometimes your design aesthetics may change. I, um, I intend to make these Japanese style uh, group planting kind of like what you see now. But uh, at this stage, the way we're developing these trees, they could also be flat tops. And, and at this stage of development, they would still probably look quite a bit like this, even though they don't look very flat topish at the moment. Um, but yeah, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We'll do more stuff with our bald cypresses uh, later on in the fall. I might, uh, yeah, later on in the fall. And then uh, we, at some point, we'll defoliate and make our, uh, and make our, uh, our, our choices for our branches for development for next year. And, uh, and then all the other stuff we'll be doing. Tonight, we will uh, continue with uh, Saturday Night Live Bonsai. That's Frida and I love to do Saturday Night Live Bonsai. And they are fun programs. Um, but yeah, this is a, a better look, I think. If I can just do this right quick, change from the subject. That's the look of the uh, pasted up... Uh, hollow feature for the oak that we did on our last on our last Saturday Night Live Bonsai uh, episode. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.